Father, thank you for this privilege, this privilege of being able to craft prayers led by your Holy Spirit, make declarations and decrees, especially concerning this special institution of marriage. So I thank you for these marriage buffers, buffers that will protect my marriage and these marriage boosters that will take my marriage to its next level. And so I pray, Lord, Father, forgive me for being critical in my marriage, for criticizing my spouse. I recognize that I'll be judged with the same measure that I've judged, as it says in Matthew 7, verse 2. Father, today I embrace graciousness. Your word says that love covers a multitude of sins. In 1 Peter 4, verse 8, I embrace love today. Thank you for your mercy towards me, Lord. I choose to release grace and mercy, even as I see how you have granted this to me. You've granted this to me in abundance. You've shown me mercy. You've shown me grace. I choose to pass on that which I've received from you, Lord. Father, I choose to start put, pursuing my spouse like I used to when we were dating. Forgive me, Lord, for taking my marriage for granted. I make a commitment to keep pursuing my spouse. Forgive me for all the excuses and rationalizations that I've made, Lord. Forgive me for not prioritizing my marriage. I choose to go away with my spouse alone uh, without the kids. I choose to have quality time with my spouse. I raise the bar once again. I choose to do the things that build emotional intimacy in my marriage. I take ownership, Lord, of this space. Lord, even as your word tells us that ma marriage must be held in high regard, held in honor by all people, I choose to give it that place of honor. And I make a decision today, Lord, that will be reflected in my use of time and how I spend time with my wife. I pray, Father God, that I wouldn't have a mindset of killing time with her. Uh, I would have a mindset, Lord, of investing my time um, with her. I choose, Lord God, to stop blaming others for the state of my marriage. Today, I recognize that when I blame others, I deny myself the ability to change. So from now onwards, I'll stop blaming other people or other things or my time or work or my special circumstances. Um, I will stop making excuses. Thank you, Lord, for our conversations that we have with each other. Uh, with my spouse, uh, even the difficult ones. I choose to stop bringing up unresolved issues from the past when we are talking about the present. May we keep the main thing the main thing in our conversations. Help us to focus, help us to be aware of the little foxes that the enemy sends to ruin our marriage. May we be watchful. Help us to guard our marriage, Lord. I choose to stop bringing up unrelated issues that often worsen the conflict unnecessarily. Help us, Lord, to develop effective rules of engagement for conflict in our marriage. May we not be gunny sackers um, that build up an arsenal of ammunition over time to attack their spouses. Your word says love does not keep record of wrong in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 so Lord deliver me from this I pray Father God these powerful prayers knowing that you're hearing them I thank you God I pray in faith knowing that as my words go out they have an effect a powerful effect in the spirit realm and that grace is released for these things to take place I pray God that our discussions would be focused Deliver us from fleshly rabbit trails in our difficult conversations. I say no to bitterness and resentment. I release my spouse from their past. Show us, Lord, the things that we need to resolve from the past. Show us, Lord, whilst focusing on the present. Where my spouse has moved on and grown, help me to acknowledge their progress, Lord. I know that will encourage them. Let me not box them into where they were in the past, Lord God. I think that people change. 
I choose to adapt to my spouse's love language, whether it's touch, acts of service, words, quality time, gifts. I thank you for the grace to do so, Lord, the grace to show them love in the way that they need to be loved. Forgive me for being stubborn about this, Lord. I thank you that your divine power has given me everything I need for life and godliness, even as your word says. And I thank you, Lord God, that this is true of my marriage, that my marriage is part of life and godliness. I thank you, God, for this powerful scripture from 2 Peter chapter 1, 3 to 4. So I know that I have the resources in me to do this. Forgive me, Lord, for when I've not made an effort to meet my spouse's needs. Forgive me for minimizing their needs. Forgive me for the excuses that I've made. Today I pray for the grace to meet their needs. And I thank you that you've given me the resources to do so. Forgive me for being demanding when it comes to my spouse meeting my needs. I choose to be gentle. I choose to be patient. I recognize that they are not wired like me. I recognize that they were not raised in exactly the same way. I recognize that our personalities are not the same. I recognize that they are not always aware of my needs. I choose to extend your grace to them, Lord God. Even as they've been also gracious toward me, I choose to also be gracious toward them. I thank you for their grace toward me, Lord, in so many areas. Forgive me for the judgments that I've made when my needs are not being met, Lord. Forgive me for the self for selfishly expecting my needs to be met whilst not meeting theirs. Lord, your word tells us that it's more blessed to give than receive in Acts 20 verse 35. So today, I choose to give into my marriage. I choose to give, Lord God. I renounce any flirtatious behavior outside of my marriage. I will not flirt with anyone other than my spouse. Lord, heal me of any wounds or gaps in my soul that would seek attention outside my marriage. Deliver me from the need to be noticed and desired by other people. Help me to see it for what it is. I come against the spirit of infidelity. I will not, it will not touch my marriage in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that our marriage will be an affair-proof marriage, that you protect us, Lord God, even as we help others out. I pray, Father, that we would not be embarrassed in this very area ourselves. I thank you, Lord God. It will not touch our marriage in the name of Jesus, and we will not be deceived in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to dress well for my spouse, desiring to be pleasing to them, adapting to them, being my best for them, not for outsiders, but for them. Help me, Lord, to give my spouse my best. I choose to give them my be the best of my emotions, the best of my intellect, my best physically, the best of my words. In Jesus' name, I choose to honor them today. Forgive me, Father God. Forgive many of us out there who often give our clients our best. We often give people at work our best. People at church also our best. But very often we give our spouses our leftovers. I make a commitment to not do this in our marriage. In the name of Jesus, I ask for your help, God. Lord, today I choose to redefine relationships and friendships that my spouse does not approve. Forgive me for being stubborn and defensive about this, but I put them first, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would uproot any ungodly alliances that I've formed. I renounce any illicit covenants, agreements that I've made knowingly or unknowingly. I renounce any soulish relationships that need to be broken. I break any soul tie that has been formed consciously or unconsciously that is negatively affecting my marriage. Father, may you show me the practical outworking of this. May you show me what I need to start doing differently. Help me, Lord, with my boundaries. Help me to have healthy boundaries and say no where I need to. Deliver me from the people-pleasing spirit that can't say no to people. I will tell my spouse that I love them regularly. I will not take them for granted. I will communicate appreciation when necessary. 
I appreciate their personality. I appreciate their abilities and I appreciate their actions. I appreciate the fact that we're not the same. I appreciate the fact that we complement each other. I thank you, Lord, for blessing me with such a wonderful spouse. Deliver me from passing the buck. I choose to take ownership in my marriage. I choose to take responsibility. When I mess up, I will apologize and ask for forgiveness. Lord, deliver me from having a short fuse. Deliver me from anger. Whether it's me exploding or imploding, deliver me from that, Lord God. Whatever type of anger it sometimes is, deliver me, Father God, from being vengeful in my marriage from being calculating in my marriage, for punishing my spouse in various ways, sometimes through the silent treatment, sometimes through withholding emotions and, and affection. Forgive me for that sin, Lord God. Deliver me from making quick, unrighteous judgments. I choose to suspend judgment. Deliver me from operating in the spirit of accusation instead of the spirit of intercession. Help me, Lord, to deal with the things that trigger me. Show me how to tell myself different stories about what happens around me and in me. Help me to tell myself your story about situations. Lord, may my mind be renewed according to your word. May I see every situation from your vantage point. Give me a heavenly view of my life. I declare that our sexual intimacy will not be a chore done under obligation, but a time of pleasure. It will be a time of connection. It'll be a time of comfort. I thank you for that, Lord God. I thank you for your goodness. May I see every situation, Lord God. Every situation, Lord, as a blessing. Help us, Lord, to find creative ways of making time for this special aspect of our marriage. I declare that our sexual intimacy, Lord, will be something pleasurable and enjoyable. Thank you, Lord, for regular intimacy with my spouse. Thank you, Lord, that you are giving us creative ways of making time for this. Thank you, Lord, that our sexual intimacy will be a time of serving each other in honorable ways. I renounce every wrong mindset around our intimacy and sexual union. I declare and I decree that God will be honored in our sexual union. I resist every assignment of the enemy to hinder us in this special area. Deliver us, Lord, from any addictive tendencies. I declare that there will be no addictions in our household. Help us to see what these may be and to not be in denial. We desire to be filled with the Spirit of God and no other spirits in Jesus' name. Addictions have no place in us or our household. We say no to gambling. We say no to food addictions. We say no to spending addictions. We say no to addictions to do with television or sport. We say no to substance abuse of any sort and addictive relationships. We say no. We come against any hereditary weaknesses and tendencies in Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for this new bloodline, Lord. I declare that we will not go the way of generations before us um, with regards to ad addictions in the name of Jesus. So we say no to addictions within us and within our children. We say that this is not our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, for hearing this prayer and that our prayers are powerful. Help us, Lord, to identify outsiders that we can be accountable to. Give us the right couples and individuals to assist us. Thank you that we are not alone. Thank you, God, for the relational assets we have around us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that when we hit a deadlock, we have somewhere to go. May we be in agreement about where to go. Thank you for pastors in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for good friends. We're grateful for the resources uh, you have given us to strengthen our marriage. Forgive us, Lord, for being too proud to seek help. Forgive us for isolating ourselves. We say no to the enemy's strategy to isolate us. Forgive me, Lord, for telling my spouse to change, but not making an effort to do so myself. You said in your word in Matthew 7, verse 4 to 5, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? while there is still a beam in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the beam out of your own eye and then you'll be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I choose to 
focus on the beam lord in my eye first i'll look at myself i won't try and change my spouse first i will look at myself help me lord to apologize when i need to i'll practice biblical apologies i will admit when i'm guilty i will acknowledge the impact wrongdoing has had on my wife i will express remorse by saying that i'm sorry and i regret what i've done I will make restitution, Lord, where necessary by communicating to my spouse what I'm going to do to make up for my wrongdoing. I will seek reconciliation by asking for forgiveness. And by your grace, Lord, I pray that I'll be forgiven. Lord, give me humility to do this. I cannot demand forgiveness, but I'll humbly ask for it, Lord. I will also make a request after apologizing when necessary. I will request their prayers and their patience and anything else that will help the situation. If I have to explain my behavior, I will not do so as a justification for my wrongdoing. These are the commitments I'll make, Lord God. I will apologize even when there are other things for which my spouse needs to apologize. That will not be an excuse for me when it comes to apologies. I will always compliment my spouse. I'll be generous with my words and with my affection. I will communicate my needs to my spouse. I will not hold back in communicating my needs because of lies I've believed. I renounce the lie that my needs are significant. I thank you, Lord, that my spouse deserves to know my needs. I thank you, Lord, that you want to use them to be a blessing to me. So I receive the blessing. I renounce the lie that says I cannot ask because I don't deserve it. I renounce the lie that says I must not ask because they will disappoint me. I renounce the lie that says they should already know my needs if they love me. I will remind my spouse of the previous times that they've effectively met my needs. I know this will encourage them. I choose to stop stonewalling. I choose to stop sweeping things under the carpet or giving my spouse the silent treatment. Father God, deliver me from sulking or from feeling sorry for myself. And any form of self-absorption. Deliver me from selfishness, Lord. I recognize the enemy's strategy to ensnare me through these behaviors. So I renounce them in the name of Jesus. I renounce verbal abuse in my marriage. We'll speak to each other respectfully. We'll never use derogatory words like dumb or stupid in relation to each other. I thank you, God, that you're showing me these things. I thank you, God, for your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord God, for your kindness. I thank you for the grace, Lord, to see all these things when they happen. And may this type of conviction continue all the days of my life. Father, forgive me for when I have belittled my spouse with my words. I recognize that my words carry emotions and I choose to only pass on what is good and what brings life. I consecrate my tongue to you today. My jokes will only build up and not tear down. I renounce all stinging words and sarcasm in Jesus' mighty name. I renounce every manner of speech that may give the enemy a foothold in my household. I embrace Colossians 4 verse 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Proverbs 18, 21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. I thank you for these truths, Lord, and I choose to bring life with my words and not death. Forgive me, Lord, for when I have been unhealthily stubborn. Deliver me, Lord, <clears throat> from being too rigid. Forgive me, Father God, for when I haven't even noticed some of these things, Lord God. Show me where I've been stubborn. Show me where I've been immovable and deliver me from it, Lord God. Today, I replace the it's my way or highway attitude with a heart of flexibility. Lord, may we have a healthy, may we have healthy boundaries in our marriage where I allow my spouse to be the best version of themselves. Thank you, Lord, that they don't have to be like me, but the best version of themselves. I choose to invest time into my marriage. I know that I can't have a good marriage without investing time into it. I choose to fully leave so I can fully cleave. Your word says in Genesis 2 verse 24, very, very powerfully, that is why a man 
leaves his mother and father and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. I thank you, God, for this type of leaving. Show me what and who I need to leave, Lord. Show me who and what I need to leave. I need a revelation of this, Lord God. If it's friends, I need to leave. If it's certain family members I'm still unhealthily, emotionally attached to that I need to leave, may you show me, Father, who these are. And I pray that my, my spouse will always come first. I break off every unhealthy tie in Jesus' name. Show me how to relate healthily with my family. Forgive me for helping others first, Lord, before my spouse. Forgive me, Lord, where I've helped others but procrastinated when it comes to my spouse. I declare that we are setting up our household with its own values and standards. We'll embrace the good from our parents and reject anything bad. Help us as we decide together on our distinct family mission, vision, and values. Forgive me for sometimes doing favors with ulterior motives that love with a hook. Your word says in Romans 12, verse 9, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. May my love, Lord, be pure with no guile. Even as you described Nathaniel and you seemed drawn to him and you liked him because there was no guile in him. Search my heart in this matter, Lord God. May I be sincere. May I not be deceptive, Father God. May I do everything that I do to honor you and to give you all the glory. Lord, I choose to be curious about my spouse's dreams. Forgive me for when I've been fixated and obsessed about my dreams and not, a pay, and not paid attention to theirs. Help me to nurture their dreams. Help me to support their dreams. Help me to invest into their dreams. Help me to fund their dreams. Help me to be excited about what you have called them to. Help me to help them to be faithful, to fulfill their dreams. May I contribute to their dreams and not contaminate their dreams. Lord, may I be an asset to them and not a liability. Father, may you forgive me for saying and doing things that make my spouse feel inadequate. Show me my role in reinforcing and building their self-esteem. Give me a revelation around this, Lord. I choose to build my spouse's confidence by the grace that you've given me. Let them become even more confident because they're married to me. Let them see themselves more and more as you see them because they're married to me. Help me to reinforce your view of them, Lord. May they know that you love them. I commit myself to verbally acknowledge their capability and achievements. I commit myself to asking for their opinion on, diff on difficult matters. I choose to demonstrate that I trust their ability and judgment calls. I choose to not destroy their self-esteem by micromanaging them. Help me to be aware when I start doing this, Lord. Deliver me from the fear and pride that causes this domineering behavior. I will not hover around them after making a request. I'll demonstrate trust. I'll boost their self-confidence by your grace, Lord God. I'll boost their self-confidence by making suggestions instead of barking commands. I'll boost their self-confidence by showing my desire for them physically. I thank you for this, Lord. I'll boost their confidence by quoting their good sayings when I'm speaking to others. I'll boost their confidence by trusting them with things I usually like to control. I will always communicate appreciation of their dedication to their family, which is us. I will always communicate appreciation of their hard work. Forgive me, Lord, for when I've consciously or unconsciously expected my spouse to be like my father or mother. Forgive me for any unfair comparisons that I've made. Forgive me for that, Lord God, even the lack of awareness that comes with us, with that, Lord. I choose, Lord, to give my spouse my best. I will prepare to come back home just as I prepare so well to go to work. I choose to honor my spouse by informing them of important things in my life. I choose to honor my spouse by letting them be the first to hear 
about good news in my life. Forgive me, Father, for using their past mistakes as leverage in the marriage. Deliver me from such power games, Lord. Reveal to me anything else in my heart that is wicked, as David prayed. I choose to show respect to my spouse at all times. Father, may you give me creative ways of communicating honor and respect to my spouse. I choose to bless them with their favorite meal often. I'll respect them by telling them what is coming up on my schedule. I will respect them by communicating when I'm running late. I will respect them by responding timelessly to their communication, whether it's WhatsApps, emails, or missed calls. I will not take them for granted by procrastinating. Lord, give me the grace to knowingly do some of the chores I know they don't like doing. Lord, give me the grace to prioritize their personal interests. Lord, help me to go the extra mile in playing my part in raising our kids together. Father, let me take responsibility. <clears throat> Father, may we have lots of recreational time together. May we never drift apart. May we never be like two ships passing each other by. May we never start living parallel lives. Forgive us, Lord, for that deception of thinking it's normal because many people go through it. I pray that our relationship would never just be administrative, but there would always be that connection. Help us, Lord, to find more activities that we enjoy doing together. Show us which ones bring us together and which ones pull us apart. Open our eyes to these things, Lord God. May we give up the ones that pull us apart, the activities that pull us apart, and may we do more and more the ones that bring us together. I thank you, Father God, that divorce will not be an option that is regularly expressed in our, in our home. I thank you, Father God, that you're such, you're such a good God. And I thank you that you protect us from this. Lord, your word is so powerful. And your word powerfully tells us that what God has put together, let no man put asunder. So I thank you, God, that div divorce is not our portion. I thank you, God, for your word that tells us, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. In Mark 10, verse 8, and then verse 9, which says that, Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. And I thank you that no man will separate us. I thank you that we are truly one flesh, and may we function that way. I choose not to speak negatively or condescendingly condescendingly about my spouse to others I will be concerned about their reputation and their brand I'll be mindful about how I present them to the world Lord give me wisdom on when and how to communicate our challenges to others show us Lord who to speak to in difficult times I accept my spouse for who they are show me Lord how to accept them graciously whilst challenging them. I want to reinforce that self-acceptance, Lord. I will not be a freeloader in this marriage. Help me to play my part in the roles that we've agreed upon. Father, forgive me for keeping financial secrets, even under the guise of, I don't want her to be stressed out. I declare that there will be transparency in our marriage. Forgive me for how I've rationalized lack of transparency. I declare that there will be truth and honesty in all aspects of my marriage. Therefore, there'll be no lying in my marriage in Jesus' name. We recognize that Satan is the father of lies, as it says in John 8, 44. So we declare that there will be no deceit in this household in Jesus' name. We will not intentionally deceive each other. Holy Spirit, may you bring conviction in this area of falsehood. I thank you that there'll be no falsehood in our marriage, in word, in deed, yeah, there'll be no deception in our marriage. Father, help us to share the same core values. Where there's currently no alignment, may you bring alignment based on your word. Help us to engage in the necessary discussions to come to this place, Lord. Show us, Lord, how to come to a place of alignment of values. And may these all be word-based. 
Father, today I pray for divine enablement to minister to my spouse in difficult times. May I know what to do when they're discouraged. May I know what to do when they're exhausted. May I know what to do when they're confused. May I know their love maps, Lord. May I know how to comfort them, Lord. Thank you that you have given me everything I need for life and godliness. And so I thank you that part of that is the resources to love my wife the way she needs to be loved. I thank you, God, that today I can embrace empathy. I will show my spouse emotional empathy. I feel you. I will show them cognitive empathy. I get you. I will feel with them. I will actively listen to them. They will feel understood by me. They won't have to pretend around me. I'll be a safe place for them. I will show them empathic concern. I'm here for you. They will know I'm there for them, Lord God. I will have a heart of empathy toward them, Lord God. They will feel understood. They'll feel like I'm in their shoes. I'll be with them, Lord, in times of joy and rejoicing. And I'll be with them in difficult times. I make that commitment, Lord God. Because you are their Lord and they are married to me, they will never have to feel alone in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you'd help me to be sensitive to the times when they're feeling alone. Father, help us as a couple to be resilient. Thank you that you give us the ability to cope with life stress. Thank you that there is nothing too big for us to handle. Thank you that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Your word says this in 1 John 4 verse 4. So I can cope with all of these things. The influence and impact I have on the world around me is bigger than it has on me. I'm not a victim. So I thank you, God, that you've made me powerful and you've given me the resources to minister deeply to my spouse. Thank you for giving us a great sense of worth in you, Lord. I'm comfortable with who I am, despite my frailties and anecdotal behavior. I know I'm worth a lot because of who I am before I have performed. May I reinforce this to my spouse too. May they not be the performance mentality in our marriage, Lord. May we not breed this. May we not create a culture of this, Lord God. But may we be in a place, Lord, where we know we're loved and we're worth, worth so, so much even before we've done anything. I declare that my great performance is not the source of my worth, but rather stems from my sense of worth. I'll continuously affirm my spouse. I will give them affection even after they have failed. I will speak to them in a manner that does not shame or condescend. I will reinforce their sense of worth by showing them compassion. I'll take time to serve them romantically. I will purchase things for them that they wouldn't buy themselves because of guilt. I want them to know they're blessed. My heart toward them is generous. I'll verbalize my commitment to them. I'll tell them they won't have to guess. I commit myself to pray for them regularly on a daily basis, Lord. My, by God's grace, I'll be tender towards them. I'll always kiss them hello and goodbye. I will verbally affirm their physical appearance. I commit to sending them affectionate texts during the day. I will hug them affectionately. I make these commitments, Lord God, because I know my actions are important. I don't want to just have a theoretical affection, a theoretical commitment, but Lord God, I want to demonstrate it practically. So I make these commitments to you, Lord God, that I will verbally affirm them in front of others. I will reinforce their sense of security by showing public displays of affection. I will reinforce their sense of security by proactively planning for the family's needs. I will minister with them and I'll minister to them. I will assist in problem solving when they request. I will demonstrate domestic commitment by allocating time to household management. I will demonstrate my domestic commitment by investing in my family and not just my toys and my projects. I will show them that they come first before your work, <clears throat> before my work, before friends and before my hobbies. I thank you God for these commitments. Lord, I recognize that I'm a hard worker 
And I know that, Lord, I'll pour myself into my work. But I choose, Lord, that they will come first. I will work on understanding their manhood or their womanhood, whatever the case may be. I thank you, Lord, that you're helping me. In my case, it's my wife. I will understand her womanhood. I will study it. I will work on understanding what brings them fulfillment. And I'll help to facilitate this. I will work on understanding their sexual needs and preferences. When we are intimate, I will make love with passion and focus instead of just going through the motions. I'll communicate appreciation for their menial tasks that they always carry out. I'll do what I said I will do. I know that keeping promises builds trust. I will be consistent, clear, and decisive. I know that my indecisiveness can make my spouse feel insecure. So I thank you for that opportunity, Lord, to do this. I renounce passivity in my marriage. I renounce fatalism in my marriage. I'll shape my world. <clears throat> when people ask how my married life is treating me, I'll respond saying, I'm treating it well, thank you. I'll continue doing so, Lord. I desire my spouse to feel significant in this marriage. Help me, Lord, to reinforce this by how I am toward them. I declare that they will feel like they matter. They will feel like they are a contributor. They will feel like they make a difference in this marriage. They'll feel, they'll feel so significant. Our marriage will make a difference to many lives. Even as Dennis and Barbara Rainey said, true significance is found as we invest in a cause that will outlive us. Father, may you make our purpose together become clearer and clearer to us. I'll reinforce my spouse's sense of significance by the love bids I make. I will invite them into my world. I will take them on dates. I will do menial tasks that may be, th may be their role, but I'll offer to do them, Lord, as a blessing. I will inspire them to keep dreaming. I will dream together with them. I'll always cherish them by calling them something sweet and exclusive. I'll be fully present when I'm speaking to them. I will not smother them because I respect them too much. I won't treat them like a child. I will give them cards with a message. I will give them a back rub when they need one, when they request one, when they desire one. I'll ask them follow through questions. I'll ask them, Lord, more than two questions deep. I'll reinforce their sense of significance by treating them as a participating partner. They will know that they belong. They'll know that they're lovable just as they are. They will know they are accepted. They will know that I delight in them. <clears throat> I declare that they will know that I accept their imperfect past. Lord, we accept each other's families with all their positives and also negatives. I declare that we will enjoy each other's sense of humor and laugh a lot together. I thank you that this will happen more and more, Lord. Lord, deliver us from self-centeredness. I declare that in this marriage, we will take into consideration each other's recreational preferences. I thank you for that, Father. I value my spouse as a powerful human being with their own unique taste in clothes, their own unique taste in hairstyles, in sport, in food, in movies, in humor. So I'm going to allow them, Lord, to be themselves. Forgive me for being controlling. Forgive me for squashing this. Father, help us to be patient with each other and give us grace to cope where we have differences that continually bother us. Take us to a place of freedom and relational maturity, Lord. Father, help me to see some of my spouse's weaknesses as strengths that are just being overextended. Show me how to minister to them in this area. Father, I pray that the strengths of my spouse's traits would manifest more. I pray that these would not be hidden treasures, but that they would use them and use them in these areas and increase their awareness of them, Lord God. I ask that you help them in this and I ask that you help me in this, Lord God. Father, free them from positive blind spots where they think they're average, but in reality, they're amazing. Lord, may they gravitate toward these things and be fruitful in all that they do. I commit to continue praying for this fruitfulness, Lord. 
Father, I pray that you help us in the areas where we are pushing each other's buttons. May you heal our wounds, Lord God. May we not wound each other in this marriage. We know that hurt people hurt others. So may you heal our hearts, Lord. Father, I repent and renounce all my inappropriate reactions. Forgive me for blaming my spouse for these. I choose to take ownership and find healing and wholeness in you, Lord God. Make me whole. Make me relationally mature. Father, free me from that tendency to transfer past pain onto my current reality in my marriage. Give me understanding, Father God. Give me an understanding, Lord, um, of my spouse and of the current situations that we are in in our marriage. May I never take past things, unrelated things, things that have happened at work, things that have happened in the past, and project them onto my spouse, Lord God. Forgive me for operating from that spirit of accusation instead of the spirit of intercession. God, I thank you for supernatural grace that is being imparted to me to truly love my spouse, for us to truly respect each other. I pray, Father God, that you deliver us from the selfishness that pervades so many marriages. I thank you, God, that the things you've written concerning us are coming to pass, Lord God. I thank you for our destiny. And I thank you, God, for the multiplier effect, Lord, of our marriage, that we will influence many people and that we will influence each other. I thank you, God, that you're taking us to our next level as a couple, Lord God, our next level of effectiveness, our next level of kindness, our next level of bonding and connection. I pray, God, that there would be such a humility in us, Lord, a humility that recognizes that we need the Lord God, a humility that steps out in brokenness, knowing that we need your grace and we need your favor to do the things that you've called us to do, Lord God. I ask that you step in to our lives in a phenomenal way, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you would do a powerful work in our lives, that you would free us, Lord, where we need to be freed up, Lord. Father, I repent and so I renounce all these inappropriate reactions that I've had, Lord God, all these tendencies that I've had that are not of you. And today I commit my marriage to you and I invite you to have your way. Come and be our Lord. And I choose to submit myself, Lord, to your headship and to your direction. I pray all these prayers in Jesus' mighty name.